this is Trey coming to you from our Bristol site. So I'll show you a little bit about what I've been doing all this weekend in the greenhouse. I've been having fun this weekend in the I've been doing gardening. But uh lucky thing when you've got a uh, greenhouse, of course, is your gardening can be indoors. I'm going to show you what I've been doing. And uh, this is a big job that's been needed doing for a while. So I'm going to redo the area that's behind me. So now I'm going to show you what I've been working on. Not finished yet. Uh, we're going to redo one of the branches. So I've been decking this all out. It's a bit foggy in here at the moment because I've had the hydrofogger on for the last couple of hours. And there it is behind me, that big industrial looking thing down there. There's the big, big reservoir, Let's it's got fish in there. Here. So, here's our galungal. Here's so Alpinia officinalis. And then the begonias haven't changed, I'll just trim them back a little bit. That Listata is doing very well. That's been there. That survived the electrics. Um, as did the Masoniana actually. We got um, a Morphophallus in here, that's uh, Hesutus coming up. Still not convinced that, you know, until they flower we don't know. One of them turned out to be um, the wrong, wrongly, wrongly labelled and I spent a fortune on it. What else we got in here? That's um, one of the Brugmansia Datura family. There we go. I got that from one of the rare plant fair. No, that was a plant heritage uh, rare plant fair thing. Um, Here's that thing that everyone calls Libicia turtleback. It's probably a Cosmianthem, we don't really know. Another thing in the same family. That's an Aphalandra from the Americas, Brazil, I think. And Echinomys, Jesneraci, uh, Mexican species. That one is Patens. Restrepia, Medanilla. There's Impatience growing behind. There's some Gapertias back here. A Cyathea tree fern. There's a big tall avocado that goes right up. It's even branching now up there. And um, one of these um, spider plant tree things, whatever they're called, a Melastomasi. If I'm pronouncing that right, you can't really, the light's not great for the camera. Is that? It even goes right up there as well. But um, back down here. So yeah, all that moss has been planted in. I've planted a lot of these things in the ground now. So where that before, you know, just directly in. Before they might have been in pots, the medanillas in there properly. The Phragmopedium here. So it gets running water going through its roots all the time. How they like to grow. Pilea matsudiae, but back there has flopped over a little bit, but that'll come back. There's a um, Aspidestra shishanensis behind there. That's one of the rarest species. You only ever see the other one. Um, I pulled off as well. Where have I put it? A thrixpermum. Um, damn it, where is it? It was growing on the tree that I thought was dead. I, I gave that one up for dead a couple of years ago. And um, so, yeah, this is where I put my leaf cuttings. But this begonia foliosa is going to be cut back. There's sonorilla in there. There's biophytums that just pop up. Got pilea, pilea mollis down here. And what have we put out there? There's a Fias up there. Fias uh, species an orchid. Orchid. Got more Columnias here. Look at all these aerial roots on it. It's, oh, it's sending out flowers soon. Um, that's Brenneri. We've got Roycus and um, two repeater forest species actually competing with each other on here uh, for space. A Wallisia, Discoria, Ascananthes, Ascananthes. Peperomia, oh hang on, I'm just saying the names are not actually pointing it. We've got a Peperomia maculosa here. Uh, it's actually on a piece of cork that's then attached to the cork behind. We'll have to refix that one up. Yeah, Anthurium has um, just fallen down a little bit. There's um, a Piper species in there. And yeah, two Repetophoras. That's one that, I can't remember what that one is. I can't remember what this one is. That might be Corthalcii. Um... I never know. I'm actually not the greatest repeater for a fan. Here's some of our tropical blueberries up here. And then we just put other things like the small orchids up there. The ones that can get lost. Uh, Dikeas and um, Orthinocephalus. And there's a couple of Bulbophyllums up there. And Apendicula. Um, Trichotosia ferox. So my, my um, 
little experiment. So I put one up here at the top where we get a bit, a bit more light, a bit drier. And I put one in here, down here at the bottom as a terrestrial. So in the Jim Comber books, it talks about it being a terrestrial. Now, when I was in Sumatra, I was lucky enough to see this one in the wild. And it was actually on a tree, growing outwards, really wet. And um, you can see all the effect of the hydrofogger on there. Um, so it would usually have that all over it. But, um, but yeah, this one is not enjoying being this wet. There's a new growth coming up. It's, um, it feels wobbly at the base, but I'm going to leave it in there for a little bit longer, see how it grows. I have a couple of them, and I've also taken some um, some uh, kikis off the one at the top. And where we've got lots of changes is down the bottom here. There's our Pilea cardinari, cardinia, I can't pronounce it. It's got a common plant in the house plant tray. Plant market has been for many years. Behind that, Sonarilla, Margaritia, what we think. Tulip flowers, we don't know really. Can't really identify these things. So that's coming out. There's the lemongrass there. So lemongrass growing, that's just gone in. Then you just put display plants up here as well. So we have got extras of things as well. We've got some variety rhododendrons here. Um, just sitting in there. And Selaginella, there's a Maxillaria, there's a Dendrochylum in flower. That's our Cornutum. And Agapeti species, and then the other, the bigger, like a Homeolemma species back there. So the other thing you can also see here, put the light on for this, and that is that the path Rothschildianums that I've planted in here, into the rock surface, I, one's vertical, one's not. I just want to see how they would grow in that situation so they're actually doing really well and they've actually both rooted onto the rock and into the cracks of the rock which is actually i'm really chuffed about so we've got phragmopedium growing over here directly into the uh into the stream you can see where its roots are just getting water running through them all the time that that's really happy there and then I've also got the Pathiopedalum, Rothschildianums, growing there. They're only small, and um, I can't remember the clone. It's a special clone that I've got. I can't remember. There's that um, epiphytic gi uh, ginger. There's two species of ginger which are epiphytic, and that's one of them. Um, then we've got this tree here. It's how, this is what it's, things get interesting on here. So, I put the passion fruit in behind here. It's a spe one of the species of passion fruit and um, passiflora. Can't remember the name off the top of my head. So the, the vine hasn't sort of turned itself around, etc. Yet, but that will um, that will look better soon. But this solanum here, I mean, it's even growing along the floor. You know, it's it's on the ground. I just snipped a bit off to send to a customer. But yeah, it's going in every direction. It sorts of starts off here it's actually taken over there's a mark gravius in here as well which goes up and around you can see it's sort of it got that's the darker areas really so it's gone into the darker areas but that solanum it's just going off in every direction it's it's everywhere it's gone all the way up here it's behind there going off in that direction and then it winds its way all the way over here it's coming down look at that it's all in fruit this is definitely not a terrarium plant we're going to be doing a video on that soon. Plants that are sold as to wearing plants that really um, shouldn't be unless you're prepared to constantly prune. But you can see all the, um, the aerial roots this thing puts out. Crazy. Um, so yeah, what else have we got? There's, the, there's Columnia there. We do like Columnias. Just like Jesneratia, really. Um, and Anthurium in here. There's a Philodendron here. Not the greatest fan of these. It's, that has not done anything in a very long time. Um, that's a renanthera that's, I mean, it's not enough bright light there for it really. It's never really going to do anything. Um, that's just a monochica. It's a good solid plant though, but its roots have all adhered to the um, cork properly, so I can't even pull it off. Um, we've just mounted the Maclenia in Cygnus to this. Um, it did suffer a little bit with some, some, um, inconsistent watering you can see from the um from the leaves there and this is the one that has red orange and green on its leaves um 
I've just put that Calicia up on there, see how it grows as an epiphyte. Codonanthe, Ascananthes, there's a Psilogeny on there. So this goes up, and there you go, even, even at the end there. And um, we'll put some more of the other things on there. That's a nice um, example of, what is it? I can't, there's so many of these are mislabeled, and so many of them um, are sold as something that they're not. So this is a Dibley's plant that they've sold as Parviflorus. Is it Parviflorus? No idea, I think it's probably Pulka. Um, Pulka's quite varied, but then Pulka's only found in a couple of Indonesian islands, so we desperately need some um, proper taxonomic revision work done on on Ascananthes, but that is, I mean, they're stunning, aren't they? For that, that's where I did that um, post on Instagram by putting the two of them together there. Well, it's even nicer with the Anthurium, the red Anthurium flower behind there. Lots of, lots of, where are the hummingbirds? Um... I accidentally snapped off the new growth of the uh, Dendrobium mutabili today, so I'm gutted about that. But yes, this is this is what have we have been what we have been working on.